What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to LVN Each World. I'm Logan. We got Dylan behind the camera. And today, on a special episode, I'm bringing to you guys cooking with LVN. Today, we're gonna make bolognese sauce, a meat sauce that originates from the city of Bologna, Italy, which is in the Emilia Romano region. That's Northern Italy. I think it's just between like the, what's, Italy borders of Switzerland, I'm pretty sure. I think it's on that border, north of Rome. We're trying to shoot, cook this in like 60 minutes or so, maybe a little bit over. We did the prep work before, uh, before we started shooting this intro. I'm gonna get into that a little bit later. You need, this is six quarts right here, this Dutch oven. Uh, don't be scared when you look online at prices and whatnot. Some of these can go for as high as like $450. I got this on Amazon for, I think 60. So that was a good deal. Two pounds of ground beef. Off camera, before we did the intro, I diced up uh, one stalk of celery, one onion, and then two carrots. The carrots are gonna bring out a little bit of sweetness in the sauce. The onions are gonna bring it a little bit more uh, well, like a savoriness, and you're gonna definitely smell that uh, whenever you throw it in there in the pot. And then the celery is just a good base layer. Salt and pepper, use that for everything. Basil leaves and parsley, we're gonna use that towards the end. Two cans of tomato paste, you can use really whatever you, uh, whatever brand. There's no brand preference really for any of these, right? I used uh, bone broth, right? You use four tablespoons of this, put it in some warm water, shake it up a little bit. We're not gonna use this towards the end, but it's important to have salt for the pasta. All right, as for the pasta, we're using just rigatoni, right? I try to get something that was a little bit more bougie, but normally when you cook bolognese sauce, you use tagliatelle, which is like just really thick, big pasta. It's like the size of spaghetti, probably bigger, but its thickness is huge. It's like got the thickness of, of this, right? And for a hearty meal like this, for a hearty sauce like this, you want something like that to soak everything up. I would say probably try to stay away from something thinner like angel hair because Again, it's a, it's a hearty meal and you're just gonna have a hard time soaking it up. You could use penne though, you could use uh, rigatoni, uh, ziti, whatever. It's the pasta, it's not, it's not a deal breaker, right? This will do. A little bit of red wine, we're gonna use a cup of this later down the road. I got, this is from, this is from Argentina. Probably should've gotten Italian red wine, but uh, it doesn't matter. This was bottom shelf, I spent $8 on that. Guys, you're cooking it, you know, you're not gonna drink it, right? I don't even drink wine, I'm not a big wine guy. Um, it's just a matter of bringing out the flavors, so. Don't worry about trying to go pricey on the wine. A little bit of olive oil, standard stuff, you use every meal you make. And then lastly, we got last ingredient, flour. It's really important to uh, thicken up the sauce. Uh, just a couple tablespoons towards the end of the process. And yeah, guys, I think we're ready to get cooking. I'm gonna start by putting this on just medium. You don't want it hot the whole time because when you're cooking the vegetables and whatnot, and especially when you get the meat in there, you don't wanna burn it. All right, so that's been sitting there for like two minutes now. It's gonna get, it's gonna continue to get hot, but I think we're ready to put just our starters out, right? Uh, extra virgin olive oil. You can use whatever olive oil. It's not the end of the world. I don't really freak out about that stuff. Good estimate for tablespoons is one. Whoa, that came out really fast. That's a little bit more than two tablespoons right there. Not the end of the world. Um, generally speaking, you kind of have it at a high angle, and then one loop around is one. Another one is two. That poured out really fast though. Uh, you can never have too much olive oil at the end of the day. And then put your butter in there. I just got it all over my jersey. You see that? Oh, dude. That's why I don't wear a white jersey. I'll do the fit check later. But We're just gonna let this melt all over the pan like this. You can see it's already starting to melt, right? Every time I lose grip on it, it's because it's getting smaller and smaller. Two tablespoons is fine. I wouldn't use any more. This is gonna really make it rich. Um, but you're already going I'm already using a lot of other ingredients to make it even richer. I might even throw in like a little splash of milk at the very tail end of it. Um, not a healthy meal once again, but we're not really concerned about that. All right. So with the butter melted almost completely, there's still a little bit left in there. I'm going to bring it down now to low because we're going to start the actual cooking part and you can't have it too high. You can hear it's already doing the magic down there. All right. So for these vegetables, right? You want to be careful as to not burn them. Uh, but you also want to cook them, right? Because they got a lot of water in them like any other vegetable. What I do is I normally take about five to 10 minutes and just consist consistently just stirring it all the time. Again, forming that base layer. Once you know it's good is when it's going to get like a kind of a glazed effect. It it's hard to explain, but it should be kind of like almost see-through to an extent. Uh, the onion is starting to get that glazed color that I'm talking about, especially you see that right down there. That's exactly, that's what we're aiming for right there. All right, so these, these are kind of glazed enough, as you can see, especially see that onion, man. I did a pretty good job with those. Carrots, I'd say for the most part, a couple in there that maybe could be a little bit longer, but you know, time is, uh, time is of essence, right? What we're gonna do now is we're gonna add two pounds of the beef I was talking about earlier. 
This is gonna be the most labor intensive part of this whole thing because it's in a block, right? And it's never gonna cook if you just leave it like that in a block. So you're gonna have to beat it all down. And again, you can see already guys, starting to get a little brown here. We're gonna cook this till it's, till it's almost 100% cooked. Uh, you don't have to worry too hard, too much about cooking it all the way because it's gonna sit in the sauce for like an hour. So I'd say get it to like 80%. Flour, just use general all-purpose, right? Uh, some people are gonna use like, I don't know, bread flour or whatever. There's, apparently there's different genres or different types of flour, I have no freaking idea. But just use three tablespoons of this, mix around your meat. This meat's almost done. You guys can see most of it. I'd say like 75% of it's uh, brown. Still got a couple of pink spots in there that we can work on. All right, guys, it's been about, I don't even know time-wise, Dylan, maybe 10 minutes or so. Again, just continuing to beat it up. We got rid of most of the clumps. Dylan, put the camera on that, man. I mean, it's pretty good meat right there. Got rid of all that redness. Uh, you can't really see much of the, you can see the carrots, but the celery and the uh, onions kind of get lost in the sauce. But trust me, when you taste it, they're gonna be in there. At this point, we are ready. And I add the flour as well, which is gonna help for the next part when we add our tomato cans and our paste. Put all that in. I use, how many ounces is this? I think 28, standard size, right? Put this other one in here as well. And I'll mix it up once I get this one in. Using that spoon to get whatever you can't out of the initial pour. That's mixed in there pretty well. Now we're going to throw in the tomato paste. It has a little bit thicker consistency, so it's a little bit more of a pain to try to get off. I'm using the spatula because you can take this and just really, you know what I mean? You couldn't do this with the wooden spoon, obviously, because it's solid. This though, get most of that stuff in there. Oh, crap, you see that? Man, we, uh, it's real amateur's hour out here. And guys, I'm not gonna lie, I think I screwed up a little bit. I think the paste is supposed to go in before you put the crushed tomatoes in because it blends in with this, blends in with the meat. But we're gonna make it work out, right? We're gonna start to dilute this a little bit. First, I'm gonna add this. You guys are probably looking at this like, what the heck is this LVN? This is beef stock, beef broth. Um, this is gonna have a lot, you use this, in, it's, like a, it's like a hidden recipe almost, right? This has a lot of nutritional value, a lot of nutrients and whatnot, and a little bit of sodium. Let's pour it in there. And most importantly, for our sake, it's going to uh, kind of cut back on that, uh, what, chunkiness or just, it's gonna, it's gonna make it a little bit more thinner, which is what we, what, which is what we really needed. So I'll mix this up real quick. And you can just smell, you can already see what difference this is making, right? It's definitely consistency just got a lot more thinner. One important thing that I wanted to mention, guys, as you're doing this, occasionally, as you're mixing, right? Always take your spoon on the side and try to get that stuff off and bring it back down to your sauce because you'll get vegetables and whatnot caught up and you want that in your sauce. Another really, uh, more important than that, really important, just you never want it to burn, right? You never want it to get stuck to the bottom. What I do is I just take it and then just make like an M shape almost just across the bottom to make sure nothing's sticking. I don't feel nothing sticking right down right now. I've been doing that the whole time. I think we're working out pretty well. But yeah, just always making sure you're uh, grazing your spoon at the bottom so as to not uh, have anything stick. All right, now I'm gonna add the red wine. Probably again, should have gotten Italian brand. That's a, that's a sin on my part. Uh, you could be generous with this, man. Red wine is awesome when cooking. I'm gonna do one, two, three. It's about, I'd say that's about a cup right there. Once you get past that, uh, what is it, the head of the bottle? Like the handle, you know what I mean? Once you get past this section right here down the here, maybe could have added a little bit less. Again, just mixing this, mixing this in. Between the broth and the wine, you really don't have to mix it for two minutes, because again, it's not a solid, like it's not like the beef where you're beating it down constantly, or it's not like the vegetables where you gotta overturn it a lot. It's a liquid, it's gonna, it's gonna work itself in there just fine. I spend about just two minutes, just, you know, again, tossing and turning like that, scraping the bottom. But once you start getting in the wine and, and, the, and, the, and the stock, and then especially for the seasoning, you can start to create, you can start to take some creative liberties. That's the best part about sauce, right? You never make the same sauce twice. It's the golden rule I learned from my, from my mom. For this recipe, we're gonna keep it simple. A little bit of parsley in there. Don't be afraid to add seasoning. You're gonna let it sit for, again, an hour, partially covered, but you're gonna open it up and stir every 15 minutes. Take a little bit of, take another spoon, get a little spoonful, and you think it needs more salt, more pepper, put it in there, stir a little bit, and then just cover it back up and continue that process, right? But, so mixing that in there, it's mixed in pretty well. We're gonna move on. I always, I think basil's always a good touch. It's a little, I think there's already a little bit in the crushed tomatoes, so I'm not gonna go too, yeah, you see that? Crushed tomatoes with basil. I'm not gonna go too crazy on these basil leaves, but, yeah, it's just, I don't know, it's, an, it's another cooking essential. I think every good sauce will have a little bit in there. So 
mixing that in as well. Guys, lastly, salt and pepper, very standard seasoning, right? You guys put it on everything. Don't be afraid. I'm a big pepper guy just because I think it's kind of underrated. Salt is literally in everything. So, but pepper's not, right? So don't be afraid to go crazy on the pepper. That's just my personal preference. So if, you, if you're not a big pepper guy, don't put it in there. Again, that goes for any of these uh, any of these seasonings. If you don't like it, put it in there and you can substitute it with whatever. All right, so this is, again, this is not my first rodeo with this. I've used half and half. I've used milk. I haven't used milk, but I, I think just using any dairy in general, it's gonna add to that richness and it's gonna make this a little bit thinner, which it could use a little bit, but most importantly, it's gonna make the sauce more rich. You look at any Bolognese recipe online, it's gonna say add some sort of dairy in there. So nothing crazy, right? That was maybe like a half a cup. Again, you don't wanna go too crazy with it. That at the very end, that's, that's important. That's a it's, a, it's a game changer. I'm not gonna lie. I kind of BS'd you guys in the beginning when I said this was gonna be 60 minutes. This takes more than 60 minutes to cook. Uh, the prep itself, like the cutting the onions and stuff, if you have a food processor, I'm gonna say it once a thousand times, use a food processor. It's gonna make your life a, whole, a lot easier with the vegetables. The actual cooking part, I'd say vegetable, the, when you saute the vegetables, maybe takes five to 10 minutes. The beef, about 10 minutes, and then everything else after that, you know, is to your own discretion. If you wanna go through it, fly fast, um, you could probably only spend like 10, 15 minutes after that, but you don't wanna go, you want, I took stages in between all the different seasoning and all the different recipes, right? Because if you just go, I went wine and then immediately salt and pepper, you're gonna lose it all in the sauce. You want each flavor to shine. We're gonna bring it up just a little bit. I wouldn't even go medium. Bring it up though, until you get this to a boil. All right, guys, taking a step away from the cooking real quick, LVN Fit Check. You know, we got the Venezia FC jersey. No Philly today, but we figured, you know, we're cooking Italian. I'm an Italian jersey on. But yeah, I got this in Venice six years ago. I saw one in the shop. I had to get it. I love this jersey. Probably not the best to wear when cooking because it's all white, but hey, one in Rome, or in this case, one in Venezia. All right, guys, as you can see, we kind of got it to a boil a little bit. Maybe could have left it in there a little bit longer. I'm trying to keep that promise I said in the beginning, though, about over under 60 minutes. I know I, I, I've kind of lied on my end. I failed to keep up the bar, the, my end of the bargain once again, but it's boiling. I'm going to give it a good stir. Now, this stir right here, I can feel it. It was kind of building at the bottom from the heat, right? Because everything is pushing. I was pointing out to Dylan. You can see the high water mark, how it was up to here. Over time, the sauce is working down from the concentration from the heat. And by the way, if you ever get something stuck, don't freak out, add a little bit of water. Again, water's in everything. Add a little bit of water, turn it off, stir, rub, like go hard like this, and hopefully you should be able to get it off. But yeah, don't, don't freak out. All right, so we brought it to a boil, it's done. Now what we're gonna do is, I'm going to cover it, but I'm gonna cover it like this. You wanna let it breathe for a little bit. I'd say that is a fair amount to leave open right there. That's how much you want to leave it open, guys. Leave it on the lowest setting possible. It might be a little tough with the electric burner because you can't really get it on like a simmer. This, this burner does not have a simmer mode. That one does though. So I'm going to take this and put it over the simmer and just let the sauce cook on that one because it's already cooking in internally, right? I don't want to worry about the transferring over to another stove. Take it over to that one real quick and that should solve our problems. All right, so now your sauce is virtually made, right? Hypothetically, if you really wanted to, you could take it out right now and serve it, but again, you gotta let your flavors do the work for you. It's important to let it sit there for at least, I'd say at least an hour. Some people, guys, they'll cook this and they'll put it in the oven, crack it open a little bit, crack, you know, crack the lid a little bit, and let it sit there for like three, four, five hours just to really, really let all the flavors out. We don't got that kind of time, but we got an hour. So I'm putting it on simmer. I'm letting, uh, I'm covering a little bit. So it's gonna, you know, it's gonna boil, but not enough to where it's a catastrophe every 15 minutes, and I'd say maybe even every 10 for the electric just to be safe, you're gonna go in there with your spoon, you're gonna open it up, and you're gonna just do the typical stirring and whatnot that we've been doing, and making sure you're really focusing on the bottom because it's gonna burn at any point, it's gonna be now, because you're not paying as much attention. Every 10, 15 minutes, you're gonna go in, so like four or five times, scrape the bottom, stir it around a little bit, and then put it back partially covered like we have so. And then we should be good to go. Gotta make the pasta too, but for the sauce, we'll be good to go. Now it's time to finally add rigatoni. Be careful and don't do it like I just did it to where it might splash and you might get some recoil. Get her all in there though. And then you're only gonna stir occasionally. Again, you want it to boil, but you gotta be careful to where it doesn't stick to the side or stick to the bottom. So if you see it really start to boil, just give it a little stir real quick and then let it sit. You wanna let it sit and you wanna let it cook all the way through. 
I'm going to cook it to al dente, which is like a little bit on the firmer side. If you like your pasta a little bit, uh, what's the word? Like more well done, uh, you can let it sit for an additional, you know, two minutes or so. But I'm gonna make it so it's al dente. Well, I won't bleep it out. We'll, we'll make sure we're not violating the uh, FCC guidelines. Nick, Camille, how do you guys like it? I really like it. I like that it's not like too saucy or watery. You know what I mean? Like, there's a lot of meat to it. You like the thicker consistency? Yeah, I do. It's good with the noodles. Yeah, the pasta definitely holds up. It's soft and thick. It's good. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. Again, you know, a meal like this, look how much sauce we still have left. You can go, get closer to it. All right, you're gonna be eating this for like, honestly, if you make this for yourself, hell, you could probably eat this for a whole week. If you make it for a big group of people, this is gonna, you're definitely gonna have uh, seconds and leftovers and whatnot. All right, guys, it's gonna wrap it up for today's episode. Listen, I had a lot of fun doing this. Pretty time consuming. One of the, one of the uh, episodes that we've done that's required a lot more effort. Probably this in New York is, uh, when I come to think of it, in terms of time and, and money as well. It's not a cheap dish, but hey, you, you do things like this for the people you care about, happy to have, uh, cook some food for some hometown friends and some uh, university friends. In terms of the future, listen, this is my first time doing it right. I'm not perfect, but I think I kind of got a grip on it. I'm gonna keep just perfecting the craft over time, work on other dishes and whatnot. If you guys have any suggestions on what you wanna see me cook, comment below, let me know. It's your channel after all. As for the cheesesteak tour, what are we at now, Dylan? We're at nine, are we at 19? I think we're at eight, okay, we're at 18. I wanna cap it at like 25. I have a couple more places in the city I wanna to go to. But listen, if you're from a surrounding area, I'm talking Jersey, Delco, Mont, Bucks, let us know if there's a hometown place that we think, that you think is worth our time. We're more than willing to take the trip out. Guys, gonna wrap it up today for LV Each World. Special episode, really happy to uh, take you guys along for this trip. Shout out to mom for teaching me how to make this dish. Love you guys. Like and subscribe, peace. Why? What are you? <laughs> oh, my bad, my bad, my bad. Pick a B or pick a. That was perfect. That's all I need. That's the picture. Yeah, let's see, let's see, let's see.